everyone so today we're going to be talking about our camera setup basically this is kind of a how to for how we film and edit youtube videos we always get lots and lots of questions whenever you see any of the snippets of the behind the scenes stuff in our vlogs or anything like that about what we're using how we get it done so we thought today we'd get really self-referential with it and show you the process of filming this actual video it's like vlogception but not in like a video, it's like videoception. So since I'm using my nice camera to film this video, I'm gonna be doing most of the filming today on this little camera. Say hello to the camera. Hello camera. So we're gonna cut back and forth a couple of times between these so you can see what we've got set up and how some of it affects Sarah who's gonna pretty much just sit here and do nothing. That's like my life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, Let's do this. So this is actually what our setup looks like from the sides. We've got Sarah there on our little sofa end bit that we sit on. And we've got above her, we've got a Rode microphone, which we'll talk about in a second. Some lights, which I'm gonna cover, and the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the sound first because it makes more sense if we do that. So right up above Sarah's face on this lovely mic arm that we've got here is a Rode VideoMic Pro. And we've got it on the arm just so that it's fairly close to Sarah's face because although she's really loud and annoying, microphones work way better when you push them as close to the face as you can. So this is hanging just outside the top of the frame of the camera to try and pick up as much sound as possible. Now the settings I have on the back of this, I've got it just on its regular mode, not on the low pass setting, and I've got it at zero dB gain. It's quite a noisy mic, so I wasn't able to get away with 20 and minus 10 was too quiet. So zero in the middle is a nice happy medium. And what I actually do to get the sound from this is I run the mic cable all the way across the top of this light stand and then down into this guy here. Now this is a Zoom H4n Pro and the mic cable just goes straight into the back of this. And what this is, is it's basically an audio recorder. It records audio and it records it to its own little memory card inside. It's got an SD card in there. And now if Sarah says some stuff, you'll be able to see the volume go up and down on it. Hello everybody, and this week we're gonna be talking about all of our film equipment. So that goes straight into the Zoom and is recorded. And then afterwards what I do is I sync that up in Premiere Pro. To help with that, I run a cable from the side in its little headphone port just into, ooh, just into the side of the camera. This is so that it's easier to sync up and is a nice backup in case we lose the, lose the audio, which shouldn't happen, but could happen. So good to be prepared. It has happened before, so it's always good to have it because we've had that before. We're like, where's the audio? It's okay, it's backed up. Okay, so onto the camera itself. I use a Canon 5D Mark III in manual mode and I use a Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. I really, really like this lens. It's a good field of view. It's not too wide and it's not too narrow. And it also gives you those really nice blurred backgrounds because it is a lovely lens. So that's all set up here. And uh, we can see on the back, Sarah looks a bit whited out just because that's how the screen comes off on camera. But we've got this set up and recording. Uh, I'll set my settings to this every single time. Like I don't have standard settings that I use. I just set them up so that it looks not too bright, but not too dark on the back. You'll know when it's fairly evenly exposed, you just kind of get a feel for it. One thing I do always try and make sure that I have is that the shutter speed is set to double what the frames per second you're filming is in. This is known as a 180 degree shutter and it just makes things look a bit better. If you use it with a different shutter speed and a different frames per second, it, it kind of, you get motion blur sometimes and this is a good way to help eliminate that. So that's all recording there. Ooh got plenty of memory in it so it's not going to run out and then we've got Sarah lit by these two lights these are two big white soft boxes I'll try and show you from the other side but they're going to be very very bright oh don't want to kick stuff so this is kind of the view that we have when we're filming blinding is what it is <laughs> there you go that's pretty good they're fairly close because they're nice and diffuse and they make your face look pretty good, I think. We used to use the Niwa 160 LED panel and we had four of these, but we stopped using them because they were really good, but they weren't quite what I wanted and they run off batteries. 
and it was a total nightmare trying to keep these charged. You can either use like eight AA batteries and get 20 minutes of filming, or you can use a rechargeable one and get about 25, and that wasn't quite enough for some of their videos. They did tend to go a little long, so we stopped using those. Now, the reason we film with these lights instead of our house lights is what I'm gonna show you next. Now, we'll cut back to the main camera footage for this. So I'm gonna turn these on and turn these off. So as you can see, this is a normally lit room, but on the camera, it's incredibly dark and it's gone a weird color because these are quite yellow lights. They're not great for filming and I just don't like the way that they look. If you look at Sarah's face, there are a bunch of shadows on it and it doesn't look great on camera. So even if you do expose this properly, it's not gonna look as nice as if you're using a nice diffused light. So we'll turn these back on, don't look at them. I always look at them and I always get blinded. We tend to film at night as well because daylight is really unpredictable and we could be in shadow and then sun and shadow. We tried it for a couple of videos, didn't like how it looked. So most of the time we film at night and we make it look a lot brighter with our cool light. And this is pretty much it from the hardware side of things. We've got everything set up. And then once we're done with the video, we'll film our goodbyes. And then we turn all the cameras off and we go put all the footage on my computer and we start the post-processing and then Sarah does the editing. So that is pretty much it in terms of sort of um, production equipment and what we do when we're actually filming the video, obviously editing and color correction stuff happens afterwards so we'll probably maybe explore that in another video and um, we just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what we use when we set up our videos if you have any questions about anything we've covered in the setup please just ask in the comments even if it's fairly unrelated or you just got something you want to know about cameras let me know i'm more than happy to answer anything if i can help I mean, you don't have to go to the same level of equipment we do. Um, we can obviously always help you with anything a little bit simpler, but this is kind of at the stage we're at now. And I'm actually really, really happy with the setup. I think it works really well. We can get set up pretty quickly now, whereas before it used to take almost longer than making the video. It used to take setting up the equipment. And by the time we came around to filming, we were so angry at the situation and stressed that it was like, hi everyone, I hope you're having a lovely day when we were like really stressed from the lights going out or the the mic's not working properly. Mm. So I'm glad that this is a setup that works for us now. But as Sarah said, you can definitely use a lot less equipment than this. I mean, you definitely don't need a shotgun mic floating just up here, for example. You can do it on camera. You can use a lapel mics if you find those easier. There's loads and loads of options. This is just what we do for us, uh, partly just to make everything easier. So I hope this has helped you out. Um, keep an eye out as well. We're hoping to do a couple more episodes in this series just on basically film production and how we film, edit, produce our videos. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again on Monday for a vlog. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you've got something to say about the things that we said. And why not check out one of our other videos that should be on screen somewhere right now. Thank you for watching. Ah!